So yeah, some bad news. Our coffee pot's burned out. So we think uh, we'll have to look at that for next month. Sorry about that. The coffee situation. Don't know how to fix it. Um, so welcome to our, um, our uh, March meeting here for the Grand River Wood Turners Guild. Uh, my name's Doug Brinks. I'm the current president of this organization. Um, we welcome everybody here. Um, I see we have a lot of new faces here. Um, let me just mention some of the things that, um, that we have as members for uh, available. We, um, we have a library so over on this side back there. You can check out books and DVDs from our library. Um, we have a grinding station that uh, we can't really use today because we're having electrical problems on that whole wall there. So, uh, but normally we have a sharpening station with a Wolverine setup that you can bring your tools down, which next month we will have that working. Um, I got a raffle table going on over here. Um, I don't know who's selling the raffle tickets. It's probably Tom. Tom oh, Dave? Oh, and there's stuff on the floor too. So we need another raffle table. Okay. Tom, Tom's selling tickets. He's sitting over here on the side. So if you want to buy a ticket for the raffle table, find Tom. He's got his hand up there. Um, right now, our, uh, our current duels is $35. Um, if you are interested in joining today, we probably have to have you see Steve. Our membership person is on vacation. Steve's, oh, Gary's here. Okay, Gary's our membership person. He's in the back with his hand up. <clears throat> so if you're interested in joining, you can talk to Gary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we also have... Um, Mentors around town that we don't charge our members to, to come and spend the day with us or an afternoon with us at the at our shop and um, you know help you out with something you're working on or something you want to try doing or whatever wherever you're at when you're turning life you know if you uh, or you just want to come out and hang out with somebody <laughs> I, somebody came out the other day and just kind of hung out in the afternoon watched me turn a few things and <laughs> I didn't see you here <laughs> but yeah and we we talked about talked about sanding and things like that so anybody's welcome to come out uh, we have several mentors we're scattered around the area uh, I'm south I know Ron's is probably way north and John Marquardt is way north, but we have some people that are right around town, Byron Center. So if, you, uh, if you're looking for someone to, to come out to a, a shop and um, um, just hang out or help you out with a problem or sh uh, help you with a technique you're working on, get a hold of us. We're, we're happy to do that. It's not, a, it's not a burden at all. You know, we kind of enjoy it. Um, let's see, moving on down the list, our... Uh, our demonstration today is going to be a natural edge bow with Jeff Heidela. Um, so he's going to turn a natural edge bow, and we'll see how that process is done. It's pretty easy to do. A lot of people just can't wrap their head around it, especially if you're a beginner. It, it doesn't make sense on how a natural edge bow comes out because it doesn't look round, but it, this, it works that way. Uh, next month we have uh, Tom Hale's going to be here. Um, he's going to be doing weed pots. Uh, a lot of you might know Tom from uh, Ron's retreat. He's been very instrumental in Ron doing his retreat for the last four or five years, whatever. I don't know how many years you did that. But um, Tom's has always been there as an instructor. Um, he's very knowledgeable. And uh, so he'll be here next month doing weed pots. Uh, so that's that. And then the next month after that is Ron Vincent, which we think it's going to be a napkin holder or texturing. We don't know. He's in Florida right now. So when he, uh, when he gets back from Florida, we're going to ask him, what do you want to do anyway? So, but uh, he brought something to our, I know we, he brought something to the show and tell table that we really liked. So, and he said he'd be willing to demonstrate that for us. Um, we're happy to be here at Woodcraft. Um, this is a new facility for us. This is our first meeting here. Uh, we just have a couple things. Uh, we'd like everybody to use the main entrance, if all possible, to go, come and go. And please don't poke around the warehouse looking at things. If you want to look at things, there's a whole store on the other side of that door that you can look through, and you can even purchase those things over there. So... So they're more than happy to have you poking around over there, but please don't be poking around back here um, and, uh, and walking out the back door because then somebody, you know, okay, what? Did they just pick up something and run out the back door? So, so please use the main door to exit. 
um, and, uh, and feel free to poke around in the store all you want. We are going to attempt to post... Yes, Ken. Oh, yeah, Dan and Jason. Uh, these are uh, our, uh, our woodcraft people. Jason is the branch manager here on the left. Jason, right? Okay, and then Dan is the general manager, the regional manager. The, Bruce. Okay. Thank you. So, so I'm guessing that lake is called Will Be Gone. That's what he said. Will Be Gone by summer. So Lake Will Be Gone. thought that was actually in Wisconsin somewhere. Garrison Keeler's Lake. But maybe that's how he named that lake too. <laughs> okay, so that's, uh, that's, uh, we're really happy to be here with, uh, with Woodcraft. So um, just please uh, be polite and uh, yeah, and uh, don't, uh, yeah, adhere to what he said on parking, uh, no in front of the glass if you couldn't hear him. Um, the second half of the back parking lot all the way to the back is ours. So, and plus overflow and Repco light next door. Um, so, um, if anybody in this room lives in Grand Rapids and has Comcast Xfinity for their internet, I please want to talk to you. <laughs> you could really help us out in a bind. Uh, we're struggling with internet here, and uh, there are Wi spots, Wi Fi spots throughout the city that if you're an Xfinity customer, you can use for free. And there's one very close to here, and uh, we could possibly use it if we had an Xfinity customer who would allow us to use their login. You, you're one, you have that? Um, yeah, uh, see me on the break, okay? <laughs> um, because that would help us out with our internet. Right now we're borrowing a hotspot from somebody, and, uh, but I think if we, if we can tap into the local uh, Xfinity hotspot, it would really get us out of a bind. So, um, Is there anything else here before we go to show and tell? I, Tom. Uh, we'll talk about that, uh, yeah, yeah, afterwards. Um, so yeah, let's do show and tell. The way we want to do show and tell is take your pieces, come around the left side of the room, go to the table, say your name, tell us about your piece, go back up the center row, back to the back, and put your stuff back on the table. Um, oh, what I was going to say is we're going to attempt to take photos of all of our show and tell, and um, there's cards back there that we're asking people to fill out. If you brought in the show and tell, um, there's a card they would like us to, to fill out, write your name and what your piece is and what the wood is maybe, um, and that's basically giving us permission to take a picture of it and post it onto our Facebook group. We have a new Facebook group on Facebook. Um, the page, we're in the process of uh, shutting down, uh, but we're trying to migrate everybody over to the group because the group, anybody can post to the group without, uh, without any uh, issues. So. 
Um, and that's where we plan on posting pictures from here on out. So uh, it looks like Ron's first. Come on up, Ron, and uh, tell us your name. I'm Ron Campbell, uh, Cedar Springs, Michigan. Yes, I'm one of the mentors. Uh, anybody wants to come up, give me a call, and you can spend the day. Uh, this is one of my birds. It's the only one I currently own. It is made from a bowling pin from the 1940s. Uh, it'll be offered up for sale today on social media. Uh, it is cut apart. Okay. It is wood burned. It is carved and is dry brush painted. Uh, the common question is how long did it take? I probably have 20 hours in painting. I hate it, but it brings the thing to life. And I am teaching this in Columbus in May, a two-day class at Woodcraft down there. So if anybody's interested, there's still a couple of openings. Questions, comments? Hey everyone, I'm Colleen. Um, also, hello online. Um, I'm very new, but uh, last time I did one of these square dishes and it had a crack, so I used the Sugioban, um, burned it with the torch. This time it didn't crack, so I got to just leave it as the oak. And then a uh, friend gave me some cedar, and I tried my very first time of actually like hollowing something, and I'm going to have to follow up with one of those mentors. <laughs> uh, I wasn't able to get very deep, but <clears throat> ended up putting some carving tools in it, and it kind of looked neat sticking out, so thanks. <laughs> I'm Bruce Sinkowski. This is a cherry bowl finished with um, Watco cherry tinted finish, right? And then Watco over the top of that. Um, I, I left this odd shape that occurred when I dried the bowl in the first place, just to get, add a little bit of interest to the form. And I think the wood is so interesting, I just tried to make a form that wouldn't distract from what's going on with the wood. So. Double, turn. Yeah. Double turn. That's how I got this odd thing going on, right? So um, as it dried, it, became, it, it began to shape like this, right? So I left that on there. So anyway, thanks. Hi, I'm Carol Moberg, and um, this is a spectra ply wood that I buy online, and then I ambrosia maple <laughs> on the bottom, and the finish is um, oh, what you, the good stuff. <laughs> so, anyway, pardon? This way. <laughs> Yes, yes it is. Yeah. Thank you. Let's see, uh, this piece, uh, it's maple. Uh, I enjoy um, cutting and gluing, it's obvious, I guess. It's not inlay. No, I'm kidding. Uh, oh. Wood is from um, white paper, or no, let's see, Menards, nothing's fancy. Oh, I guess I forgot to say my name. It's uh, Ray Lantinga. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is uh, Poplar, and I will miss going to the jam, um, St. John Anthony Millworks, since this is all out of his scrap barrel. So. At, with a beeswax finish. Did you say that's not inlay? Did you say that is not inlay? No, it is not inlay. No. This yeah. Cut, yeah. You do it all in the blank, right before you start cutting. Right, a square blank, one at a time. This is uh, one cut and gluing. Wait 24 hours, do another one. Wait 24 hours. So it took a while. Yep. It's veneer. Yep. 
<clears throat> I got here thanks to Ken Marvin. Yeah. That's it. Good morning, Carl Hansen. Uh, this is a piece of sugar maple that spalted. It fell in my backyard three years ago. Uh, there's a fairly significant crack, so I put some splines through it, uh, not because of structure, but because it looked good. And on both of these vases, or vase, uh, <laughs> they're bottom hollowed. So I cut off the bottom after I'd rough the exterior shape, hollowed out the inside, glued the bottoms back on, hit them with these burn lines. So the uh, uh, my dream is someone saying, well, how did you hollow that through a half inch hole? And I added these pieces of wood on purpose uh, today to prove to you that they are indeed hollowed. And someone would ask me, well, how did you hollow that out through a half inch hole? Carefully, very carefully. Uh, this is a piece of uh, elm that I got from a friend of mine, also hollowed from uh, the bottom and then re-glued. And I'm uh, uh, especially, frankly, proud of the, uh, of the shape. It's got really nice, really nice lines. Thank you. I appreciate the table. Uh, I'm Daryl DeWriter. This is a piece of black oak from a firewood tree. I turned the form and then went looking for forms from the tree uh, with carving tools, and this is the result. I have a base for it under construction as well. It's ultimately going to be displayed at about this angle. Um, that sounds that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm Todd Sipple, and this is more of an ode to our mentorship program than it is my presentation. Uh, I went out in the summer and Doug taught me how to core. Um, so my neighbor's tree fell in early December, so I ran over there and asked the tree guys if I could have some chunks of the tree, and they were nice to bring it over to me. And then uh, talking to Doug last week, he said he'd help me finish it and or um, save my coring crack. So obviously my skill was not up to his, and I got a lot of cracks in the sugar maple. Uh, but I went out to Doug's house and finished two bowls. So thanks, Doug. Uh, the crack was filled with CA glue and coffee grounds. Hi, I'm Charlie Fuentes. Um, I'm a segmenter, mostly, and I do spend a lot of time out in Arizona, hence the Southwest design. Um, a couple of little pieces I did. Uh, this purple heart and holly is... is real hard to work with. I was sanding the purple heart and my holly wanted to turn purple. So I had to seal the purple heart and then sand the, the, the holly. It was a pain. So just pieces left over from my, from my segmenting. Nice. Thank you. I'm just gonna do this in two parts. My name is Rich Scripps. And um, I'm pretty new here. And one of my first real thrills here was working with when Nick Agar came to town. And he really inspired me. So I bought some of his paints. And uh, I don't know where you want me to show this, but the yellow really makes the inside. I believe these are maple. And then the texturing, you know, with tools and punches. And uh, I, to me, it added a whole new dimension to what we do on the lathe. So, and they're just fun. And my wife loved these. <laughs> That's always a big thing. This was a leftover piece. I'll talk about that here in a moment. But here's another one of Nick's. Uh, this is his paint. And, uh, you know, you put a little spritz on there and it tarnishes, make it kind of a metal uh, color and texture. So that was a lot of fun. And I missed last month when you guys did the board bowls. But I, had, at the same time, did these. Now, on the first one, 
this one. I didn't like the way the bottom turned out. There was just little slivers of really black wood, so I put it back on the lathe and cut the bottom off and put a bigger piece. That's why this base is bigger than a typical board bowl, and it worked out really well. And what I had left over from this, I made this out of. It's so simple, but again, with Nick's colors, it really is a little favorite uh, in, the, in the dining room table. So, and then this one, I did it again. I like that one so much. And then this time, I did a little inlay on the bottom of it. Just to, uh, and as far as what, pardon? Oh, yeah. As far as what kind of wood they are, I don't know. So this came from a woodcraft kit I probably bought on sale. Um, Amarella, Angelum, and Purple Heart. I guess. Thank you. <laughs> How did you get all those up here? <laughs> hey, my name's Doug. Um, I should have brought these last month when they did the bowl from a board, because these are my bowls from a board. Um, it's a little different process than what uh, Pete showed. Um, you're not really cutting anything at angles, you're just cutting a lot of flat little pieces in rings that go smaller and smaller and you glue them together. So um, the, the wood I got from these, I got from here. Um, they had a bin at the time up there with exotic wood cutoffs that they were by the pound. So I came in here and I bought enough that I laid out and I could see what my block was going to look like and then bring them all home and slice them into a bunch of pieces. So, so yeah, those are my bowls from a board. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, um, you, I made the rings and it's, I, I have a third one that I could have brought in and showed you how I screwed it up. <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> Where I, I messed up the, the I messed up the turning of it, you know, because the boards the same figures on both sides, and on the one my other one home I got them mixed up. And when you look at the outside, the one area that I was looking at, it looks perfect. But then when you look at the inside or the opposite side, it's all messed up. I didn't I didn't realize that I needed to mark which side of the board and draw a line right through all of like the yellow dots. That, uh, that I know I'd, that's the side I'm lining up. So, yeah, so that was, yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be like that because you could, you know, basically I made a bunch of rings that were about, uh, I think, three quarters of an inch wide that uh, got smaller and smaller. So you make like one, you, you start out with a bunch of, like I laid out a bunch of boards that made a, um, a 14 by 14 inch block, four inches deep. And I just bought a bunch of them here, so some of them were, you know, they were rough cut, some of them were thicker than other ones. So then once I, I figured out, okay, this is my size, then I took every one of those boards and cut it into three or four pieces. So if it was a one inch board, I got like three or four pieces out of it. So now I've got, instead of like 20 boards, I got like 60 boards, all small. Then I put them in order of a pattern that kind of repeated itself um, using those those 60 pieces. Then glue them all together. So now you've got a laminated board that is 14 by 14 inches and laminated. Uh, no, not laminated, it's laminated up and down. Then you take that to your bandsaw and you slice it into these rings, your quarter inch rings. And then you lay it out and you start out with your biggest ring and you, it's like you know a three quarter inch ring and you do that on all the way down on the board. So you, out of each board, I get four or five rings. And then the next board, you lay it down, the, you, you move it in an eighth of an inch and draw them all again. So now they're slowly getting smaller. And then you take them all and you hang them all up and go from biggest to the smallest. <laughs> and that's, that's the process. So it's a bowl from a board. <laughs> Dave Curley, no pine needles this time. I, I used rope. So what I did is a natural edge bowl. Um, not really proud of the inside of this bowl, but uh, the shape was what I was looking for. 
what I was going for here was I did some uh, pyography and painting and then used uh, artificial sinew to s secure the rope on here. This was kind of uh, inspired from a nautical um, sail making uh, when they when they do the corners of sails, you know, if they've got time, they do it ornately. <clears throat> and, and it kind of inspired me. It doesn't really look anything like that, you know, but it but it did. It was somewhat like it. Right. It just kind of gave me the idea about that. You know, so I had to use rope instead of pine needles, you know, being an nautical thing. So that's that. And then um, I have this. That's in the Kalamazoo Club. Bruce had, uh, you know, kind of, I think it was a challenge, right, to bring back a pen made from a, right. made from a, a big stick. And I, I didn't make this this week. I had this, I've had this for quite a while. But the shape of the, the, uh, the holder is, is a lot like a, a speedball nib type pen holder. So, which, you know, I'd used before, and that was always a comfortable feeling for me. So I thought, well, that's the shape I want to use for this pen. So problematic, you know, being you got a very thin drill that, you, that you're drilling quite a ways, and you can probably see I had a little breakthrough. Had to fill it with something there. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but, yeah. I, I don't know, because uh, I, I, just, I just matched it to the, to the big stick, to to the um, the diameter that, that you want the friction fit One to be. There's a step, so you want it to be the you want it to be the. I don't know if you can see that step down here against the light here, and then so there's the flange, and then I guess that you can see that step right there. You want the middle diameter, and um, you know so. And if it's snug, you know, you can you can get these in and out pretty easily. The nice thing about this is versus a, a kit <clears throat> is you, you have probably 50 of these in your house right now, you know, so you get, you know, if you're if you were selling them, you know, you can tell people you don't have to go to the store to get a replacement. Just reach in your drawer. It's the big stick. You know, it's just just throw that old ugly thing away, you know, and use the pen. So anyway, that's that's that. Uh, my name's Steve Payne, and uh, this is a piece I'd done quite early in my serious turning. Uh, I, I, it was laying in my shop. My sister-in-law was in there the other day, and she picked it up and decided she wanted it. I still have a lot of work to do on it. It's uh, Australian cypress and uh, bamboo uh, plywood. So, uh, yeah, yeah I, I did this before I met Mr. Fibonacci, so form's not great. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bruce Tannenhauer. I'm a wood turner. <laughs> um, so Dave introduced these. I don't know where we are. Here we are. Um, Helen Lacer was at the Kalamazoo Club last fall, and he did a two-day skew class. And so he decided that he was going to send us a project for the people that took the SKU class. And he sent a bunch of blanks to make these <coughs> and the pens that go in them. Pre-drilled. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about wandering off with your drill. Anyhow, um, the Kalamazoo members that are interested took what they wanted, and I've got, I don't know, maybe eight or ten left over. So I'll put the box back on the show-and-tell table, and if you want to take a blank and a pen and make one, the only thing I ask is that you bring them in to the next meeting so we can get a picture of them and send them on to Alan, just, just as a thank you. Where do you want this guy? Do you want, is that good there? All right, so I broke down and bought myself a Vicmark VOD. 
Bickmark oval turning device. And this is the second project that I did on it. The first one I didn't bring in because it's not very pretty. <laughs> An oval turning device. Yeah. It's a machine that you add to your lathe. The lathe actually just drives it. And it's uh, designed in a way that it will take your blank and not only spin it like we're, <laughs> like we're used to, but it also moves the wood as it's spinning. So as a wood turner, what happens is, you know how you're turning a bowl, you can look at the horizon and see what your cut looks like. <clears throat> There's no horizon because this wood is just moving like crazy all, all different directions. There's no horizon whatsoever. So the, the uh, machine was actually developed in Germany and the Germans have a term, so your cutting point, there's one place where you can cut the wood, and they call it the point of tranquility. <laughs> so if you get off of the point of tranquility, now us Americans, we call it nine o'clock, but um, if you get off that point, it's not a disaster like you get in a catch or that kind of thing but you'll start cutting where you don't want to cut and it'll be erratic. So you only have one spot as this turns that you can actually cut the wood. So if you get higher, now you're starting to hit the wood sometimes as it's coming in and sometimes it'll actually come away from your point. So you only got that one spot and um, after I get a little more experience with it, I'll be willing to bring it in and do a demonstration on it because it's it's pretty interesting and very intimidating the first time you turn it on. So was, was your first example at the point of tranquility? No. Well, it did. It did in, in the sense of I didn't understand how um, important it is to stay at that one point, but I'm sure all of us do the same thing. If you take your gouge, you know, you got your tool rest, and so you get your gouge, you drop your handle a little bit. Now, as you start to reach over, you're 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 off the point of tranquility. So, um, <laughs> Vic Mark actually has a a video that you can go to their website and look at. And they use a captured hollowing system <clears throat> to cut with. So it always stays at that one point, no matter where you are. Uh, I'm trying to learn how to do it with hand tools. I don't know why, maybe I'm stubborn or something. Uh, the uh, fellow from um, Woodworkers Emporium in Utah um, uses scrapers instead of gouges. And he works on a, um, a box rest, which is a wide rest. And that's what how he keeps his tool always at the same spot. So. Does that introduce another category of round and oval now? Instead of well, I'm, I'm trying to keep Ron, you know, so he can't classify this on me. <laughs> okay, I think, uh, is that it for the room? Um, let's go online. Um, if you are online and you want to uh, show your, your uh, piece, um, raise your hand or do something so that Dave gets you, gets your attention, and uh, and we'll uh, we'll spotlight you. You're on, Dave. All right. Yeah. I'll, uh, what I've got is a follow up to last month's meeting uh, with a board goal from a board. Um, I made one. This is a piece of walnut, about 11 inch by four inches high. Um, 
Turned, I was uh, quite surprised how well it turned out. Really, the grain of the walnut hid the hit the glue lines pretty well. And um, with the technique Pete was showing us on how to cut variable angles on this on the rings, the shape actually came out um, more like a normal bowl. I was mostly used to seeing bowl from a board that were just real conical straight sides or, you know, they were pretty obvious they had been made from a single board, but I was pretty happy how it turned out with the, uh, the variable cutting angles on the rings. So that was, that's my project. Ruby, you're up. Okay, I have a couple of projects. Um, I needed a new mug tree, so I made this one up. And uh, while I was doing it, I experimented with using a hard wax oil. I wanted something that would be pretty water resistant because this sits beside the sink. And my other one pretty much got destroyed by the water drops that somehow got onto it. So it's a real simple project. And then, uh, then I found that my shop got invaded. And I found these guys swimming inside it. Okay. All right. Any questions? The hardest part of these, believe it or not, are doing the ears. Yeah. Because you turn a little tiny bead, then you take a file and flatten one side, and then you take a Dremel to hollow out the inside of the ear. Very cute. Okay. And that's it. We got anybody, anybody else online there, uh, Dave? Nope, not seeing anybody, so I'll uh, put it back on to you. Okay. Um, okay, I think we're going to take a 10-minute break and uh, have, your, have some donuts. <laughs> no coffee. <laughs> and uh, look around, buy some raffle table tickets, and uh, we'll see you back here in 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you.